Well, good morning, my brothers and sisters, family and friends, relatives, subscribers. Today is Sunday. It's February the 18th. And um, as you know what, we missed you guys last Sunday. And uh, but we're here. We're here this Sunday with a word for you. And to God be all the glory. Let's pray and then we're going to go right into the word because we're going to talk to you about some really, really vital. I mean, this, what we're talking about today, like we talk about everything, is vital. But this, this scripture that we're going to be talking about today, this word today is, it's an eternal kingdom law that affects your life and my eternal life as well. Let's pray. Father, we thank you, Lord, for this word that you've given us to give your people. And we know, Lord, that this word will not return void. Like it says in Isaiah 55, verse 11, it's going to accomplish what it's sent to do. And we pray, Lord, that each and every one that gets a chance to hear this word will listen to it, receive it, and benefit from it. In Yeshua's name we pray, amen, and thank God. Alrighty, my brothers and sisters, today what I want to talk to you is who is the only sacrificial lamb of Yahweh? Let me say it again. Who is the only sacrificial lamb of Yahweh? Who is that? It's Christ. Come with me, if you will, to John 3. And we're going to start reading because I want to show you something that's so essential that all of us need to know how vitally important this kingdom law, this person, is to our eternal life. This one individual. Listen, let's go to John 3. Let's start at verse 1. And look what it says right here. Then I've got some other scriptures I'm going to read and some word for you. But I really, really, really want you to pay attention to this. Excuse me a minute while I readjust myself. Look look at these um, beautiful flowers behind me. Whew. My wife and I always are, are so grateful to go find some very beautiful flowers and and put them up there because it's essential that you give people their flowers while they're still breathing and can see it. All right, I just thought I'd just throw that in for a minute, but let's read. You know, I always have my King James Version right here. I always have my iPad to split with either the new King James Version or an easy read or some other translation that I think is going to help us all understand the perception of the scripture and what we're saying. We want to make sure that whatever it is that we're teaching and speaking about is that you and I both can turn right straight to that scripture, find it, read it. And, and then just always, I always have plenty of paper with notes, plenty of notes and um, scriptures written down because I, I like reading the word and studying the word and asking the Holy Spirit what we're talking about today. All right. So um, let's read. There was a man named Nicodemus, one of the Pharisees, and he was an important Jewish leader. Right now, I am reading from John chapter 3, verse 1, and I'm reading from the easy-to-read version so that you all can listen to the very words I'm speaking. Get your own scripture, whether you're in King James, James whether you're using your iPhone, your Android, your iPad, whatever whatever device you're using to read, it could be a bit book, Bible itself. But I, I want to make sure that we are thoroughly understanding the vitally importance of this word. This word. Let's keep reading. I'll read it. I'll, I'll go back and start from the beginning. Verse 1. Chapter 3 of the book of John, verse 1. There was a man named Nicodemus, one of the Pharisees, and he was an important Jewish leader. And one night he came to Christ and said, Teacher, 
or rabbi, whichever translation you're reading, we know that you are a teacher sent from God. He said, we know. He knew it, but some of those other religious folks didn't and didn't want to know it. And you'll see that as we continue to read. No man can do these miraculous signs that you do unless they have God's help. Now Christ answered, I assure you, everyone must be born again. And anyone who is not born again cannot be in God's kingdom. Now my brothers and sisters, let me share something with you. There is a lot of different religions. Men make all kinds of religions. This word that you and I are speaking about is not a religion. I'm telling you what the king said about his kingdom. King Christ said in order for you and I to be a part of his eternal kingdom. Not only while we're still breathing here on earth. But once we expire and leave here. Christ. This king. That created everything. Said the only way. To his kingdom. Is you and I must be. Born again. There is absolute. I want you to study for yourselves. Every other religion, every other, whatever it is, whatever you believe in, whoever you believe your God is. Because Yahweh said, I'm the God of the Jews and the Gentiles. That's Greeks and every other race of people that he created. He said, I'm the God. I'm the only. There's no other God but me. And Yahweh sent his son, Christ named him Emmanuel, meaning God with us. And he said to all of us, there's only one way to my kingdom. Let me go back and read verse 3 again. Christ answered, I assure you, everyone must, he didn't say maybe, be born again. And anyone who is not born again cannot be in his kingdom, in God's kingdom. Nicodemus said, how can a man who is already old be born again? Can he go back into his mother's womb and be born a second time? That's what verse 4 said. Verse 5 said, Christ answered, believe me when I say that everyone must be born from water and the Spirit. And anyone who is not born from water and the Spirit cannot enter God's kingdom. The only life people get from their human parents is physical. But the new life that the Spirit gives a person is spiritual. Don't be surprised that I told you you must be born again. He says the wind blows wherever it wants to. You hear it, but you don't know where it is coming from or where it is going. It is the same with everyone who is born from the Spirit. Now, Nicodemus said in verse 9, he said, how is this possible? Christ answered, you are an important teacher of Israel. And you still don't understand these things. The truth is, we talk about what we know. We tell about what we have seen. But you people don't accept what we tell you. He said, you people. Verse 12, I have told you about things here on earth, but you don't believe me. So I'm sure you will not believe me if I tell you about heavenly things. 
the only one who has ever gone up to heaven is the one who came down from heaven, the Son of Man. My brothers and sisters, in the book of Romans, chapter 10, verse 8, and you know what? Why don't we just take a minute to turn here because this is so essential. I want you to see something. Because we, we're meeting people. I ran into some people at the post office just recently and we was talking about the man said his wife had died. And I said, well, thank the Lord that she is born again, hopefully, and went home to be with the Lord. Because he said she's in heaven. But when I mentioned the word born again, he had this puzzled look on his face. Like, what do you mean? Like people can just live their life, their whole life, however they want. And then when they leave here, they just go straight to heaven. It's interesting that people believe in a heaven and a hell, but they're not taking the time to study, to see, to make sure that I'm prepared for heaven or hell. Whichever one they choose. I was doing a study recently and this guy was doing a... He was going back, all the way back, saying that Israel, which became a nation in 1949, I think it was. How the land belonged to all the Jews for over two, three thousand years. And he was trying to go all the way back to Abraham and Isaac and... And then after he did all this chronology study, he's talking about A.D. and D.C. and before Christ and after death. He did all of this, but he says, I don't believe in none of that because I'm an atheist. I'm an atheist. And so I'm looking at this stuff and reading what he had wrote. And I'm thinking, man, what, what a wonderful study that this guy did. And out of all of this study, he decided all the documented history, they're going to still fight for the land not, not, not fight for Yahshua, but because they are willing to die just for the land itself. How much sense does that make? I mean, the land's going to be there. It's going to be there for another, however long the Lord chooses for it to be. But if you and I don't focus on what the most important thing is to make sure that we are born again, so we can enter into our king's kingdom. That's the most important thing you and I must do. That's, that's paramount. That's the most important decision we can make. All right, let's go to Romans. Oh, look at chapter 10. Follow what it says here, right here. I was just looking up here. You know, when you guys get the chance, why don't you go ahead and start reading from um, verse 1. Well, you know what? Look what verse 1 says. Romans chapter 10, verse 1 says, Brethren, my heart's desire and prayer to God for Israel that they might be saved. My heart's desire. Glory be to God. Don't you just get glory bumps when you hear that? That they might be saved. Look what it says right here. For I bear them record that they have a zeal of God, but not according to knowledge. For they being ignorant of God's righteousness and going about to establish their own righteousness. My Lord, my Lord. My brothers and sisters, this is what we were just talking about. People establishing their own righteousness. Not, not, not the righteousness of our king for the kingdom of God, but this church is establishing that that church established, this preacher, this priest, this one over here, scribes, Pharisees. Were, uh, listen, every nationality of people 
have their own religion and has rejected <clears throat> the kingdom. They, they worship the creature more so than the creator. Look what the word of God is saying here in verse 3. For they being ignorant of God's righteousness and going about to establish their own righteousness, having not submitted themselves unto the righteousness of God. My brothers and sisters, don't let that be us. This is the reason why I'm saying we titled this the only sacrificial lamb of Yahweh. Who is that? Who is the only sacrificial lamb of Yahweh? There's only one. Look what it says right here in verse 4. For Christ is the end of the law for righteousness to everyone that believeth. Now, those individuals that was under the law, because Moses, the Mosaic law, was written, and people didn't even know if they was doing right and wrong to the Ten Commandments, and those other additional commandments showed up. Then he has something to govern themselves by. And what the scripture is saying is Christ, he, he fulfilled the law. He didn't do away with it. He fulfilled it because no man could actually keep the laws other than Christ himself. Because Christ had no sin in his life. But you and I, hmm, it ain't a day go by before we have to say, Lord, I wasn't thinking that thought. Get that thought out of my head. Our ways and actions, our, our atomic nature, we was born in sin, born in it. So we have to do the things that God wants us to do by becoming born again. Now look what it says right here in verse 5. For Moses describes the righteousness which is of the law. He describes it. That the man which do these things shall live by them. Okay, let me back this up so I can keep cutting my head off. I keep cutting my head off in here. I got to back this Bible up a little bit. Woo! Six says, but the righteousness which is of faith speaketh on this wise. Say not in thy heart, who shall ascend into heaven? Which is to bring Christ down from above or who shall descend into into the deep, which is to bring up Christ from the dead. But look what the Lord says right here in verse 8. And this is essential for you and I. This is even before you and I participate in water baptism. All right? Listen. Verse 8. But what saith it? The word is nigh thee, even in thy mouth and in thy heart. That is the word of faith which we preach. Come on. I gave you the scripture, Romans chapter 11. We're down here reading right now. Start at verse 8. I'm at verse 9. I want you to read it for yourself because it's essential that you understand how you and I can prepare ourselves to receive this gift to step out of this natural life into kingdom life where we are reborn into the kingdom of God. We were born in the physical. This is teaching us how to be born into the spiritual. And no one, no one, is going into the kingdom of God unless you are spiritually born into the kingdom of God. It doesn't matter what your title is or who you think you are or what your race is or what you think your faith is. It doesn't matter. What matters is what, what does God say? Now, I used to say, I really don't care what you think and what you believe. But guess what? In this particular case, it's a burden on my heart to make sure that you and I truly understand the word of God. That's a burden for me. I, I really do care in this case what you think. Now, when it comes to the word of God and the things of God and making sure my wife and I get this thing right, 
that when we're ministering to people, we care about this word. We care about this word because we're going to be held accountable for what we're teaching and telling you all. We, we know that. So look what it says right here. Verse 9. If thou shalt confess with your mouth the Lord Christ. You can use the Lord Emmanuel. The Lord Yahshua. And shall believe in thine heart. That Yahweh. Has raised him. Christ from the dead. Thou shalt be saved. It Listen. I don't care who is saying anything other than what this is saying. You believe what the word of God says. Believe what the word of God said. You have to first believe and acknowledge that he is. And then you need to ask the Lord, forgive me of my sins and acknowledge him. Let's keep reading. Look what he says. Let's read it again. If thou shalt confess with your mouth, Lord Christ and shall believe in thy house. You made Christ the Lord of your life. Lord, forgive me of all my sins. I receive you as a supernatural gift from the Father. You are the Lord of my life. I confess that thing and I believe you are the sacrificial lamb. You, you're it. You're the only one. There, and there is no other. There is none. Search it, receive, research it for yourself to see if it is. See who was birthed, walked this, walked this earth, became the sacrificial lamb of God. See if God has more than one sacrificial lamb. You research that so you'll know for yourself. Research that. And look what he said. God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Verse 10. For with the heart, Man believes unto righteousness. You're not working it. You believe unto righteousness with your heart. Your mind, your will, your emotions. Getting your mind renewed. Studying this word. And with the mouth, confession is made unto salvation. You confess this thing unto salvation. You're opening your mouth. Life and death is in the power of your tongue. What you saying? Out of your mouth. You have to confess this word for yourself. And you need to be in an age of accountability where you're understanding exactly what you're doing. For the scripture says, whosoever believes on him shall not be ashamed. Verse 12, for there is no difference between the Jew and the Greek. For the same Lord over all is rich unto all that kind of call upon him. For whosoever shall call upon him, the name of the Lord shall be saved. What is the name of the Lord? Emmanuel, Christ, Lamb of God, sacrificial lamb. You can go, once you do this, you go be baptized. You can see we baptize you in the name of Christ. We baptize you in the name of Yahshua. We baptize you in the name of Emmanuel, which means God with us. What does Yeshua mean? Savior. Savior. Yahshua simply means the Savior of the world. Yahshua. Look at that. Now, you know what? We are already 24 minutes into this. There, there is a couple more scriptures I want you to go to. Let's look and see real quick mm, while we still have a little bit of time here. Let's see if I really want... Holy Spirit, where do you want to go next? Where do you want to go next? There are so many scriptures we have here. Okay, let's go to John 10.10. 10. Look what it says right here in John 10.10. 10. Let's start right here. 
A thief came to kill, steal, destroy, but I came to give life. Life that is full and good. This is the easy read. Now, over in the New King James Version, if you look at John 10.10, 10, it says, For the thief does not come except for the steal, the kill, and the destroy. I have come that they may have life and that they may have it more abundantly. Who's the they that the Lord is talking about? The sheeps. Because Christ himself became the sacrificial lamb for who? The sheep. And as you study, you know that when Moses went back to Egypt to get the Israelites out of Egypt from Pharaoh, there had to be a lamb killed, a male lamb killed without spot or blemish. And they took the blood of this male lamb, the sacrificial lamb, the Passover lamb, and he put it on the doorpost. They put it on the doorpost so that all of those that had blood on the doorpost, the death angel passed over them, and that was it. They, was, they, they survived. The ones that didn't have, like Pharaoh's house, that didn't have a, his first son, what? Died. Some of the other officers in that brass that was in the military, and some of these other people that didn't have the blood on the doorpost like the Lord had ordered Moses to do, those people died. And Christ became the sacrificial lamb for us, which means he paid the price for our sin. Other than that, you and I, all of us that was born in sin, would die and go right straight to hell. The difference is we have an opportunity right here, right now, to accept Christ, the sacrificial lamb, who paid the price for our sin that we can enter into spiritually. Step out of this so-called, we were born by our mom. So those of you that don't know the definition of a woman, whoever birthed you is a woman. She's a woman. In the natural, that's the physical birth. This birth that we're talking about and that Christ told Nicodemus about and his disciples and said, go ye in the world and make disciples, witness to people, get them born again and get them baptized. Because right along with this baptism comes the baptism of the Holy Spirit. The water baptism also brings on the baptism. It's the remission of sin. It's symbolically you have died to death, the natural, physical death, that atomic, sinful death that came on us through sin, through Adam's disobedience, that is shed off, that, that's dead. And then you and I are born again through the water baptism and baptized by the Holy Spirit, Christ himself. Once you receive Christ as Lord, you do the water baptism, the Holy Spirit comes up, you can get... Now, there is a difference between the impartation of the Holy Spirit, and that's something completely different, because you can have man's hands laid on you, and there are certain gifts that comes along with that. But the fact that you and I have a hunger and a thirst for doing the things God called us to do, that's wonderful. So look what it says right here. Verse 11 says, I am the good shepherd, and I'm reading from the New King James Version. Uh, the, the good shepherd gives his life for the sheep's. But a harling, he who is not the shepherd and who does not own the sheep, sees the wolf's coming and leaves the sheep and flee, and the wolf catches the sheep and scatters them. The harling flees because he is a harling and does not care about the sheep. You know what? Let me go over here and just read this, this very same verse. And the easy read translation. Let me get a walk. Let me get a little bit of ice water. <clears throat> My wife cooked some sausage and egg and cheese biscuits. And I'm telling you, my brothers and sisters, that smells so good. Oh my goodness, that's smelling good. Okay. So look, look what the Lord. Glory, glory be to God. Look what the Lord says right here in the easy read version. Verse 11, I am the good shepherd, and the good shepherd gives his life 
for the sheep. And that's exactly what the Lord did. 12. The worker who paid, who is paid to keep the sheep is different from the shepherd. He said the worker, that worker who is paid to keep the sheep is different from the shepherd. The paid worker does not own the sheep. So when he sees a wolf coming, he runs away and leaves the sheep alone. Then the wolf attacks the sheep and scatters them. 13. The man runs away because he is only a paid worker. He does not really care for the sheep. My brothers and sisters, you got a lot of people standing in the pulpit. There's nothing but a hireling. They are really some, nothing but a paid worker. Now, listen. I am right here standing or sitting before you doing this video and no one is paying me one red cent to share this word with you. I want to share this word with you so you and I know the only way that you, whoever you are, that gets a chance to view these videos while I'm still on earth and even once I have departed to go home to be with the Lord, I pray, my prayer is that you receive this sacrificial gift, this Lamb of God, the only Lamb of God. Step out of this physical world and spiritually into the kingdom of God. And the only way you can do that is you must be born again. And the way you're born again is to accept the sacrificial Lamb who is Christ. The only Lamb is Christ. You have to accept him as a gift to step into the kingdom of his father. That's it. Now, y'all can believe that or not. Just go ahead and get the scripture and read it for yourself. Look what he says right here in um, verse 14. 14 to 15. And I'm still reading from the easy read version. Look what it says. I am the shepherd who cares for the sheep. And I know my sheep just as the Father knows me. I am, look what he says right here, and my sheep know me just as I know the Father. I give my life for these sheep. 16, I have other sheeps too. My brothers and sisters, what do you mean by I have other sheeps too? Because there are the there are the Jews who accepted Christ, which was his chosen. That's, that's, he went to, and they rejected him. He said, I went to my own, and they received me not. Okay? And then there are some people, like the scribes, like, like his disciples, some of these Jewish peoples accepted Christ as Lord. As a, before he even became the sacrificial lamb, they became his disciples. And then he said, now there is other people. Who are these other people? Gentiles. They heard. We, the Gentiles, we heard of this Christ and accepted him as Lord. Now, these other people that have different religions, Catholic, Protestants, Mormons, whoever you are, these other things, there's a whole group of different type of religions from different ethnic groups of people. As long as these people whatever their religion is that they've established, acknowledge Yahweh as being the creator of all. And then his son Christ as the son of the living God, the sacrificial lamb, and they receive Christ as the Lord, as the only way to the kingdom, then guess what? That's part of me having him saying I have sheep and other folks. There, there is some Jews that are born again Jews. There are some Catholics that are born again Catholics. There are some Islamics, Islam people that's born again Islams. So let's keep re reading what it says right here. I have other sheep too. They are not in this flock here, but I must lead them also. 
they will listen to my voice. And in the future, they will be one flock and one shepherd. 17. The Father loves me because I give my life. I give my life so that I can get it back again. No one takes my life away from me and I give my own life freely. I have the right to give my life and I have the right to get it back again. This is what the Father told me. Now, Christ is the only one that has the authority on earth, on earth, to willfully die because Christ himself owned earth. He owned the actual earth itself. He, he created it, so you know he owned it. And he was the only one that says, you know what? I'm going to freely give up this life and I'm going to raise myself up in three days. Guess what? You and I don't have the authority to just die and decide that we're going to just say, you know what? I'm going to die, but I'm going to raise myself up in three days. Now, we can, if the Holy Spirit moves on somebody, my wife, another pastor, a minister, born-again believer, and so you know what? Let's just pray over this brother if I died and the Spirit of God said, lay hands on him and raise him up. Like you saw the prophets do. There was a lady that said, my son died or my daughter died and went and got the man of God. The man of God came and laid hands. They laid on these people and what? Came alive. They, that's because they had the authority of God to do so. But you and I, can't just die and decide we're going to raise ourselves up again. No, no. It, it, it takes another prophet, a prophetic person, the Lamb of God. Stay right there, little Bruno. Stay, Bruno. Okay. This, this little dog boy, he always wants attention. Um, where was I at? Uh, let's see. All right, 19. Let's, let's, we're 37 minutes into it, so... I had several different scriptures I wanted to read, but you see where we're going with this, okay? Let me just finish reading this out and then... Um, Nineteen says, Again, the Jews were divided over what Christ is saying. Many of them said, A demon has come unto him and made him crazy. Why? Listen to him. Now, he, here he is teaching these, <laughs> these Pharisees and Sadducees the word of God, the word, that you must be born again. These people didn't want to have, they didn't want to hear any of that, any of that. Ho hold on a second for a minute. This, this boy, he thinks he, he hears something out here and he just has to go see. He doesn't know it's cold outside. Look, 21. But others said, these aren't the words of someone controlled by a demon. A demon cannot heal the eyes of a blind man. Now, my brothers and sisters, y'all keep reading that. Keep, keep on reading that. Where was my notes? Hold on a second. Well, Lord, where do you want us to go next? We did 1010. We did this one. We did, we did this one. Uh, let's see. Let's go to First Peter. Let's go to First Peter and see what First Peter is saying. And then, because I don't remember, I wrote these scriptures down. But I always let the Holy Spirit guide, guide and lead and direct because the Holy Spirit is in charge. First Peter. And we're going to um, chapter one. And let's see. We're going over to 20. Ooh. That says 120, doesn't it? Let's go to 20. And I'm, I'm going to be wrapping this up here in a minute. Now, 
Now, this is interesting. Once again, let, let me just read just a little of this and, um, and then from the New King James Version. Well, you know what? Let me just go ahead and read it from the easy read so that everybody can get the gist of it. And what this is saying over here in 1 Peter 1.23 is this. Christ was chosen before the world was made. He was shown to the world in these last times for you. You believe in God through Christ and God is the one who raised him from the dead and gave honor to him. So your faith and your hope is in God, Yahweh himself. So, we know that Christ is God in a flesh and blood body. But we also know that God is still God sitting on the throne. And God can be everywhere, anytime, all times. But this is what the word is saying right here. Now, there's people that have a hard time following this. I, I was reading just recently where, where this man said, all of this stuff is a myth. Every bit of us is a fairy tale. My brothers and sisters, listen. This is my take. I'd rather study the word and accept Christ as Lord. And once I leave here, if accepting Christ was a fairy tale, where am I going after that? But if I reject Christ, the sacrificial documented lamb, the only lamb, reject him. And the Lord said in his word, if you reject me, you damned already. Then why would I ignorantly refuse to accept Christ knowing that if I reject him, surely I'm going right straight to hell. That, to me, that, that's a no-brainer. Why, why, why do we need to just simply reject him? We don't need to reject Christ. We need to accept him as Lord and be ensured. The scripture even tell us. Holy Spirit tell us. Look what it says right here. All right, we're 42 minutes in here. And I'm, I'm going to wrap this up. This says, 22 says, you have made yourself pure by obeying the truth. My brothers and sisters, the word says you and I that have obeyed the truth have made ourselves pure pure. Glory to God. How plain and how simple can we make this? Come on. Let's keep reading. Now you can have true love for your brothers and your sisters. So love each other deeply with all your hearts. 23. You have been born again. The new life did not come from something that died. See? This new life did not come from something that died. If it came from something that cannot die. <laughs> See, when my brothers and sisters get a revelation of that. It didn't come from a four-legged beast or a pigeon. This new life didn't come from a fowl of the air or, 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 or a sacrificial sheep, goat whatever the people used to do in the Old Testament. This new life came from Christ himself, like the scripture said, that cannot die. Look, what, let me read it again. You have not been born again. No, it says you have been born again. This new life did not come from something that dies. It came from something that cannot die. You were born again through God's life-giving message that lasts how long? Forever. The scripture says, our lives are like the grass of spring, and any glory we enjoy is like the beauty of a wildflower. The grass dries up and dies, and the flower falls to the ground, but the word of the Lord lasts forever. My brothers and sisters, how powerful is that? Look what it says, and that word is the good news that was told you. Now that was I just I just read to you First Peter, and I had one more. 
One more. Let me see where we are. 45 minutes. Let's go to Math Rules. Uh, what was that? Was that Math Rules 11? Oh, boy. Let me, let me look and see what I had wrote down because I... Let me look to see what I emailed to myself. Because sometimes I write stuff and I have to back it up to look to see what I did. Mm. <laughs> Give me one second. Let me check on this dog. You cold? You want to come in now? Okay, come on in. Sorry about that. Uh, let's let's go to Math Rose. Uh, I don't know if that's one or eleven. Let's go to Math Rose one first, then I'll look and see. Because I really want to read this. I wrote something down, but I, I I scribbled over top of it. I wrote I wrote over it twice because I don't know if it's. And then I'm almost done. Math rule. Let's go to one. And it might not be what I'm looking for, so I'll I'll see here in a second. Uh, no. Let's go to 11. And let's go to 7 and see if that's what I'm looking for. Okay, let's see what it says here. Well, th this was talking, well, let me just go ahead and, and, and read this quickly. This is Matthew 11, verse 7. And I'm reading from the Easy Read version. And this is what it says. When John's followers left, Jesus began talking to the people about John. And he said, what do you people, what did you people go out to the desert to see? Someone who is weak, like a stem of grass, blowing in the wind? Really? What did you expect to see? Someone dressed in fine clothes? Of course not. People who wear fine clothes are all in king's palaces. This is what Christ is saying to these people. So what did you go out to see? A prophet? Yes, John is a prophet. But I tell you, he is more than that. The scriptures was written about him. And this is what Christ is saying to the people. Listen, I will send my messenger ahead of you and he will prepare the way for you. This is what Christ is telling the people. Verse 11. The truth is that John the Baptist is greater than anyone who has ever come into this world. John the Baptist is greater than anyone who has ever come into this world. That's profound. Mary was in the world and birthed Christ himself. But Christ is saying that John the Baptist, the forerunner of Christ who announced him, was greater than anybody in the world. Greater. Look what it says right here. But even the least important person in God's kingdom 
is greater than John. Look, did you hear that? In, in this world, in the physical world, the earth, Christ saying John the Baptist was the greatest person that ever came into this world. Then he said, but even the least important person in the kingdom of God is greater than John. Whoever, how does a person become the least important in the kingdom of God? I don't know. But I know one thing. We want to read the word of God and tell you exactly what the word of God says. Look what it says right here. And then he says in 12, since the time John was baptizer, since the time John the baptizer came unto now, God's kingdom has been going forward strongly. And people have been trying to take control of it by force. Before John came, the law of Moses and all the prophets told about the things that would happen. And, and if you believe what they said, then John is Elijah. He is the one they would call. They would come. See, here, here John, John the Baptist and the prophets that said Elijah, they are, according to the scripture, they're the same. Right there. Let me read it again. And if you believe what they said, then John is Elijah. And he said, the one they said will come. You people who hear me, listen. And I'm almost done. What can I say about the people who live today? And what are they like? The people today are like children sitting in the marketplace. One group of the children called to the other group. We play flute music for you, but you did not dance. We sang at funeral songs and you did not and you are not sad. And why do people say people are like this? Because John came not eating like other people or drinking wine. And people said, he has a demon inside of him. And the son of man came eating and drinking. And people said, look at him. He eats too much and drinks too much wine. Here's Christ is saying, Christ is saying the people accuse him of eating too much and drinking too much wine. Christ himself was drinking wine. This is Christ saying, this is what they were saying about him. He is a friend of a tax collectors and other sinners, but wisdom is shown to be right by what he does. Now, here is what Christ did in verse 20. Christ warned people who refused to believe. My brothers and sisters, I apologize for getting out of this, getting out of the frame of that camera. But look, I, I, I'm, I'm, I got to stretch these words on my iPad so I can read it. I can sit back and read it. You know what? Look what it says right here. Christ criticized the cities where he did most of his miracles. He criticized these cities because the people did not change their lives and stop sinning. While he walked earth, Christ himself witnessing to people, showing miracles after miracles. And they still did not believe. If they didn't believe Christ himself witnessing to them and doing miracle after miracle, do you think they will believe us? Raising the dead, laying hands on the sick, witnessing to people? Look what he said right here. And then, and then Christ criticized the cities where he did most of his miracles. He criticized these cities because the people there did not change their lives and stop sinning. Christ said, it will be bad for you.
it will be bad for you. And he called them this word, C-R-O-C-H-O-R-A-Z-I-N. Chrobazins. Let me, let me highlight this and let me just look it up and see what it says. Hold on a second. It says search the web. Then I have to go back to that scripture. It's a Hebrew word, and it was an ancient village in Rome. It was during that period. And um, basically, this, this particular ancient village, he was calling these people. He said, it's going to just be bad for you people. And that's pretty much what he was talking about. And let's go back to Matthews. He, he was identifying the city that he was criticizing for showing all these miracles to, and he just didn't believe it. And, um, and look what he says here. It will be bad for you too, Bethesda. I did many miracles in you. And these are the same miracles had happened in Tyre and Sidon. The people there would have changed their lives a long time ago. They would have wore sackcloth and put ashes on themselves to show that they were sorry for their sins. But I tell you, on the day of judgment, it will be worse for you than for Tower is Siddam. Okay, now listen. And then he goes on to talking about Capernaum and stuff like that. My brothers and sisters, listen. Ye must be born again is my whole purpose of this message today. No matter what you believe or what you used to believe or how you was raised or taught, what church you went to, if you personally have not accepted Romans, you haven't went to Romans 10, read verse 8 all the way down here through 13, you should do that today. And if you haven't, have not been water baptized, go to a Bible-believing church and tell them you want to be baptized in the name of Emmanuel. Or, better yet, which is good, say, I want to be baptized in the name of Christ. Christ. Baptize me. I baptize you in the name of Christ. I baptize you in the name of the Emmanuel Christ or Christ, the anointed one, Yeshua Christ. As long as you say Christ, Emmanuel, Yeshua, it's all covered. Even, you know, there's people, a.k.a., they use Jesus, but Jesus is not a name of God. It, it, wasn't, even, it wasn't even a word. Back during the time when Christ walked the earth. It's, it's an English translation word. But Emmanuel was right there. Christ was right there. Let me, let me validate that real quick. Christ asked Peter, who does man say I am? And he said, some say you're John the Baptist. Some say you're Elijah. Some say you're a prophet. And, and Christ asked Peter, who do you say I am? Peter said, you're, you're Christ. You're Christ. The son of the living God. And he said, upon that revelation, upon this rock, this knowledge, I'm going to build my church. With that said, my brothers and sisters, let's pray. Father, we thank you for this word that has come forth from these lips of clay. We thank you, Lord, that this word will never return void. Like it says in Isaiah 55, 11. Bless your people. Bless us. Bless my wife, my family, my children. Open up the windows of heaven. Let's pour us out a blessing that we don't have room enough to receive. Press down, shaking together, running over so we can be a blessing to other people. In Yeshua's name we pray. Amen and thank God. There it is, my brothers and sisters. It's 59 minutes and 43, 45, 40. Well, you know, the seconds. It's almost an hour. So y'all have a blessed day today. And please, 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 please. Become born again. Be blessed.